hi guys, my name is Leticia and I'm actually a JS lead developer at Tomasi's Communications. And as you can hear, I'm actually quite nervous because this is my first talk. <laughs> and I think I'm going to start talking about how I switched my role from an admin to a JavaScript developer. Sorry. I don't know who voted for me, but uh, thank you, because this is not really much of a technical talk like Roland, who has <laughs> a very awesome talk. <laughs> OK. Um, so I'm going to start with my life story itself, that when I was young in secondary school, I really hated school because I never thought that school environment was conducive. It's kind of boring for me. And because of that, my grades are bad. And the only thing that I liked in during school was just to do that. And there, because of my bad grades, I couldn't get into music and, or any kind of arts course that I liked because my grades was too terrible to get in. I mean, so what can I do, right? So there was really no choices that I liked out there. And then I'm just like, whatever. So happens that my cousin actually just kind of like asked me, like, hey, why don't you try to study, uh, take a diploma in information technology? And I was like, OK, because that's the only choice I have. There's really nothing that seems good. So yeah, I got into the IT course, which is cool. But after the first week of school, I kind of hated it, because I really hated all the modules and everything that's related to IT. So I was like, I must graduate here as soon as possible, because it's such a boring course. <laughs> And then I really hated school. I really dread going to school. And I always take excessive toilet breaks and talking to classmates who happened to be in the course because they had no choice. <laughs> oh, sorry. So because of that, my grades are bad again. And I didn't attend a graduation because why would I attend a graduation of a course I hated? So then. I had no choice again, back to the bad grades mood. And I wanted to try to apply for arts, but I realized I was too shitty to become an art student. So I was like, I had my mom was telling me, why don't you just try applying to get an IT degree again? I was like, OK, because I have no choice again. <laughs> so then, of course, I got rejected. It's expected because my grades are bad. So I was like, I'm just letting fate decide whatever my life goes. <laughs> so I had a resolution. I decided to get a job to have a private degree in business because it's a cooler degree than IT. IT is like for the nerds. I don't care. <laughs> but well, I did a lot of job hunting. I sent out all my re resumes. I was like, yeah, I'm so happy. But you know, what happened? <laughs> Uh, I got rejected by several of them. You know, one of them is just to promote and sell an Apple IT product. I was looking forward to it, but I got rejected. So sad. But I got a response from a startup, which I thought it was a scam. <laughs> I was like, oh, this startup must be a scam because I'm like, oh, it looks so weird. There's only a few people. It doesn't seem like an established, well-known company like Microsoft or any other sort of that. It's like, Oh, uh, no, I'm not going to go there. But I was like, because it's my only last choice and the only one who responded, so I'm going to go for that. <laughs> so I got the interview, and there was this guy, who's a British boss, who was just telling me, like, uh, la, 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 the merit responsibilities that you have to do as an administrator and everything. And he talks about a story, a metaphoric story about a boat and a wreck and propelling forward, which I didn't remember because all my mind was thinking, I must get that job. <laughs> And yes, I got the job, which I don't know if I'm really so happy about it, but I'm really happy because that's finally a job that I could get. But I was guessing the reason why I was selected because there was no other choices there. <laughs> it's life so sad. So I had to do the basic administrator tasks where I do phone calls, handling of petty cash, organizing events, sending emails. But I think I really did a bad job because I could see frowning faces everywhere. Like, everyone was like so unhappy. And hear people whispering, like, oh, this is not good, not good. <laughs> so I was like, oh, so sad. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, thanks. 
And then one time, somehow, my British boss asked me, hey, could you modify the website and manage the content of the HTML page? And I was like, okay. Of course, because the reason why I was selected to do that because they had no much people. And then I, well, I managed to modify it by copying uh, Stack Overflow. And, well, <laughs> thanks to them. And thanks to the past where Blogspot Tumblr was so famous, you know, it was an in thing to have one blog, spot, one blog and Tumblr, like, hey, my blog, my diary is so cool because I met so much beautiful CSS and, well, <laughs> they got it. But, well, it started to have more like, oh, wait, sorry. And uh, then he started having more modifications he wanted, like the design layout, the team modifications. I was like, okay, I have to modify it. And that's when I have to start learning programming for real because I need to modify PHP and HTML and CSS and all of this. <laughs> then afterwards, I had the current CTO who obviously gave me a base before last time because I probably was a terrible admin. He was like, asking me, do you want to learn some programming? Again, I'm assuming that he asked me to do that because there was really nobody to take care of the website again. So I had to maintain the uh, AppRTC, which is a fork of AppRTC. It's a website which is running on App Engine using Python, and a signaling server, which is a signaling server which is used to relay information to people. So I was like, okay, because I have no choice again. It's my job, you know. And then I had to do a lot of Google search, experiment the changes, and I always love to advocate Stack Overflow. You know, Stack Overflow is your best friend. <laughs> Remember that. I was like, after a while, like, wow, technology is so awesome. And I had to learn about WebRTC. If you don't know what WebRTC is, let me show you guys. Oh, no, wait. That's, damn it. Hang on. Ah, OK. This is WebRTC. WebRTC is actually a free open source project that allows you to um, communicate with each other on the browser. Video conferencing, which is cool. You can do a lot of stuff with that. And I thought web technology was awesome. My perspective towards technology started to change a little where I think that, wow, it's really so cool. I didn't know you can do so many cool stuff to help people. Ah, damn it. Then, one time, the JS developer left. And then, <laughs> God, gosh, damn it. <laughs> then I was like, oh, can you handle the task you left? There's a JS, develop, uh, JS book for you to help you. I was like, OK, great. Thanks so much. <laughs> and I got it. I have to do it. And then because of that, I had two tasks, which I was an administrator working, and I was a developer where I had to send emails, arrange meeting, and another talking about the product UI, making a user interface for uh, investor and like integrating PayPal for our UI. And of course, because of that, I was stressed and I was like, oh, I can't wait to quit, you know? <laughs> I was so stressed. I really like to take on cakes, coffee, to like just calm myself down, trying to do anything to do to calm myself down. But thankfully, they had new hires, engineers, I mean, and a new admin. I mean, an experienced admin, okay? <laughs> Not just the one that just randomly dropped out and they came in and get a job. And then I was like, yeah, finally. Which I started giving. Oh. Oh, no, wait, wait, wait. Ah, then I started handling my administrator work to the experienced administrator. And finally, I get this official developer title. I don't think it's really official. <laughs> then afterwards, I started talking to the new hires and everything. And they're talking about Scrum, Agile, Trader, UI, UX. I'm like, what the heck is this? I'm in a foreign land. Where am I? What's all this? <laughs> and I don't even know. It's just new to me. And I was like thrown in this unknown world. And then I remember one thing to ask a guy, the server guy, about having to make a change. And he's like, oh, you want to change this? So go to this file, go and modify it, and push it to your branch. I was like, what's this? What do you mean by that? It's a Node.js server at the time. I was like, huh? I have no idea. And I thought it was going to be finally over until I was task assigned to do and maintain a Skyling JS SDK. If you don't know what a Skyling JS is, it's just a platform for users to actually will allow you to use the WebRTC API, but we have a platform to allow you to do connections. That's what it was. I'm, not, I'm just talking about the product I made, which is really cool. But 
it's Jira, and I had to learn about Jira, Confluence, versioning, Scrum. I was like, oh, what's that? Cool, okay. Oh, gosh, okay. Then I had to learn about software development process, which at that time I kind of screwed up a lot of times. So, like pushing to the master branch, it's the best correct way to do it if you need everything done quickly. And then, <laughs> What is peer review? You don't need peer review, you just need to merge it. <laughs> Who cares about the event? <laughs> and I do write a t-shirt size and oh, what's all this? I don't know actually, I have no idea. What is versioning? Just need an ABC. Why do you need like this zero dot X dot something, whatever? Don't understand. And because of that, I made a lot of bugs and then I have to learn about what is test scripts, what's QA validation, and what's testing. Again, also I didn't know what it is. And I had to learn from someone who helped me with me like, oh, you can use Karma.js or like uh, Mocha or like, you know, uh, Selenium. I was like, oh, okay, what, how do I set them up? And one time because of that, because I do not know how to actually do proper development process and everything, I actually pushed the master branch and made changes directly on production server, which kind of screwed up the website. And it was like, oh, not working, what's going on? I was like, sorry, you know. And because of that, I feel really bad because I secretly felt very lousy because I was thinking, well, am I really a real development? Because I just started. And you know, it's easy to get discouraged because you can face harsh criticism from others that makes you feel stupid, actually. But then I understood it's not to be too hard to yourself because we all make mistakes and it's part of a challenge of life. It's through mistakes you learn what you can do and what you should not do. And then you accept and learn to move them on or else you will learn from them. You'll be fine, you know, the flower. Then, I, because of that, I never stop learning. I never stop putting limitations on myself. Because the moment you limit yourself and you think you cannot aim, you'll never achieve what you want to achieve. So I always continue with this quest of always attaining more knowledge than I already know today. And because of this, in this two year span, I actually came from just modifying a website to actually doing a JS SDK that actually powers thousands of people's devices. That actually helps to connect different devices, like medical, consultation, group chats, internet of things. All of this can be done just within two years for never giving up and never putting limitations on yourself. And here's like an example of like a, sorry, Ah uh, gosh, you can join this room and do a gig cam talk, like example, like connecting to this. Let me try to connect to this. So, so you will be inside the conference, like I can show you. By the way, it's just gonna be a few seconds, so just sing. <laughs> if you're not connected, don't, don't be sad, it's okay. So you, if you connect inside this, you can see yourself in this page. Yeah, someone's connecting. Yeah, you can connect to this page. Hi, nice to meet you. You can actually start a video conferencing just from the web. It's like cool. Uh, okay, I'm just gonna leave the page, sorry. <laughs> oh, okay, thanks. And you can see here's an example. Thank you so much. And it's an example like how you can use the Skyling SDK, which is the product I built. You can do like Internet of Things, where this is actually connected to a browser, uh, no, to a, using our Android SDK to connect, doing the Android SDK to connect and move things around. See what you can build. Okay, it's ready. Let's move on. Yeah, it's over, whatever. Oh gosh. Oh no, 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 no. Ah gosh. Okay. And you see there's so many use cases you can do with all of these SDKs and stuff. And I was like thinking like, wow, I didn't know I can build such a stuff. You know, you can like so many use cases and things that you can help to build and integrate things for people. Which then tells me to the end, coming to an end, that 
a quote that's not from Albert Einstein, obviously. Everyone is a genius, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, you, its, life, its life, whole life living is stupid. Obviously not Albert Einstein because Albert Einstein never said it, but people use it every day. And life is full of possibilities that if you never try, you never know what you can achieve. Just don't limit yourself, you never know. And the thing that you think that you like may not be exactly the thing you like, or the thing that you think you don't like may be actually something you enjoy. So you can always try many other things and you're like, oh yeah, actually I like that. Oh yeah, actually maybe I don't really like that. So that comes to the end, so hi, Fuya. <laughs> Thank you. Do we have any questions for Leticia? <coughs> Sorry, for you. Ding. Yes, no. <laughs> questions, questions, questions. Not so much a question as a comment. You, you were copying sort of harsh criticism when you disrupted a production website. Yeah. When I was about 21 or 22, I managed to delete a production database on a Friday <laughs> afternoon. <laughs> and we didn't have a backup. <laughs> so my entire weekend was spent manually rekeying. Fortunately, we had an audit trail. With manually rekeying an entire database of, of work in progress. It sounds very fun. to say, I now have I've had automated backup ever since. But yeah, it's not an uncommon Yeah, it's really not a... We all have that moment where we're like, ah! <laughs> and then get more careful. Yeah, exactly. When you're young, you just do stupid mistakes and you're like, oh, oh, oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, any more questions? Yeah, so also a comment for uh, Liz's uh, point. That more often than not, the team should say that how resilient is our production environment. Right, rather than blaming it about pushing the master and, and bring things down, there should be a ping, there should be ways to check production environment that, okay, something's not right, let's revert, that's quite easy to do. Right? So, yeah, they should ask the question, not say, hey, blame the master. <laughs> because it's the easiest thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Alright, just uh, one question, please. Yeah, uh, first of all, I applaud your courage for telling us your story, especially yes. and saying certain things um, about arts and IT in front of this particular audience is like, <laughs> very, very courageous. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I have one question. So um, you found your love for software development, problem solving, right? Um, and this happened when you were working. Yes. Why do you think you didn't um, spot this when you were studying? Is it a problem um, because in the it's system? school, so every time you just go to school, you just copy the codes and you just like rely on the other teammates to help you achieve your goals, and you can only do other things. <laughs> Where goal means pass exam. Yes, yes, yes. You just need to memorize. Okay. Yes. So I'm going to change the track a little bit. I'm very intrigued how you actually done your presentation. Uh, I noticed you are using your mobile to the first slide. Yeah, I was using a year ago, but uh, I refreshed my page. <laughs> so. Right, and the, uh, the It's actually a kind of a controller that allows me to navigate slides. I mean, sorry. Oh, so you, you're just using that to control your computer? Yes, but halfway after a while, like my, I think my connection got off. So, so. I use manually and key. You can't really uh, cue and uh, stimulate slides. Um, you, uh, are you naturally talented? Uh, <laughs> or uh, <laughs> well, just help you? I just draw them like just for fun. Do they? Any more questions? Yeah. How's your remote control built? Oh, it's using the same scanning as TK that I. Any more questions? Uh, I see you. <laughs> well then, thank you, Leticia. Everyone can go on.